Hi guys, this is GSNO.com and I'm here with a review of the Motorola Moto G8 Power, a battery phone. This is pretty much a dying breed nowadays that most phones have started receiving 5000 mAh batteries or even 6000 mAh batteries, at least in the mid-range department. Okay, so this is a 5000 mAh battery phone, the successor to the Moto G7 Power from last year and the biggest upgrade is probably the fact that it jumps from one camera to four cameras at the back side. It was unveiled in April 2020 and it's priced at around $200. It comes in smoke black and this beautiful capri blue. Let's talk about the design. Obviously, this is a phone which is made of plastic considering the price tag. The camera doesn't protrude very much and it may feel a little bit slippery, but it's aided a lot by its bundled case, which by the way, you saw in our unboxing of the machine. It's pretty beefy at 9.6 millimeters, but not that heavy at 197 grams for a battery phone. To keep things in perspective, it's basically uh, four grams heavier than the predecessor and around 0.3 millimeters thicker. I would say that the slight curve of the backside makes it fit better in the hand. The buttons feel a bit more pressy, so to say, compared to the Galaxy A51 and A71, so that's nice. And the backside draws some lint and the fingerprints and the lint comes especially around the camera area. Okay, so it's got a solid build, that's what I wanted to mention, and let's go to the display now. What we're dealing with here is a screen, it's an IPS LCD, 6.4 inch, resolution of uh, 2300 pixels over 1080 pixels. It's got pretty narrow bezels for its price tag and price range and segment. It's an upgrade of 0.2 inches from the predecessor. Now the viewing experience will go something like this. I've got a test video here and check it out. We're filling the screen and as you can see, there's a small punch hole here for the selfie camera. Now, uh, the colors are reasonably vivid, nowhere near as vivid as on an AMOLED, but still pretty okay for an IPS LCD. The view angles are decent, they're not very wide, not the widest I've seen, and uh, I would say that the brightness is okay. Uh, the contrast was also decent in the sunlight. The colors do feel a bit white compared to what I've seen recently. The pixel arrangement of the screen is of the RGB straps variety and let's go now straight to our brightness test. So this is a test done with a lux meter and we achieved 419 lux units which beats uh, the Motorola One Action, Nokia 6.1 and the AllView Soul X7 Pro. It scored below phones like the Xiaomi Redmi Note 9 Pro, also the Nokia 6.2 and Galaxy A51 plus several other phones here. Now, if you want to tweak the settings of the screen further, you go here and you get your fill. There's display section, you got your peak display, you got your adaptive brightness, you got your night light. And the most important thing, you can choose between natural, boosted or saturated colors. And as you can see, saturated seems to be uh, the default option for some reason. Okay, there's that. I'm reasonably satisfied with the screen, even though I expected the colors to be a bit less white. Now, when it comes to the other innards, um, I'm talking about the CPU. It's actually a familiar face. You've seen it before. Qualcomm Snapdragon 665, 11 nanometers octa-core, seen on the Nokia 5.3 and Xperia 10 II. Uh, the phone doesn't suffer from lag or anything like that. It sure helps that it has a pretty stock Android 10 experience. It also bundles 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigabytes of storage, as well as a micro SD, which shares the slot with a nano SIM. Now, as far as benchmarks are concerned, I'll get back to our sister site right here and go straight to the benchmark department. So let's start off, let's start off with Antutu 8, where as you can see, we surpassed the Motorola One Macro and also the Nokia 6.2 and the AllView Soul X7 Pro. We stayed below the Nokia 7.2 and the Xiaomi Redmi Note 8T plus the Motorola uh, One Action. So when it comes to Geekbench 5 in the multi-core department, we managed to beat surprisingly the Galaxy Note 10 Lite and the Galaxy A51 plus the Nokia 6.2. We're still below the Motorola One Zoom and Nokia 7.2, but these results aren't half bad. And when it comes to the GPU and gaming, we're about on the same level with the Xiaomi Mi A3, we're actually beating it and also beating the Xiaomi Redmi Note 8T. But at the same time, we stay below the Motorola One Macro and Galaxy A50, which is definitely not flattering because they weren't uh, powerhouses, so to say. When it comes to the temperature, we have a separate field for that. 
rest assured that uh, we definitely did not encounter any trace of overheating. 35.4 degrees Celsius in games and 33.5 degrees Celsius in benchmarks, so absolutely no overheating here. And here we are, the battery phone has reached the point of the battery analysis. 5000 mAh on board, just like the predecessor with the promise of 18 watt charging. Now, of course, the results are obviously going to be high in video playback, 18 hours and 11 minutes, which goes above the Galaxy A71, Galaxy S10 Plus and Zenfone Max Pro M2. Now here we are in the continuous usage department in PC Mark. we scored a pretty good 15 hours and 53 minutes and it means we just beat the Motorola Edge and the Xiaomi Mi Note 10. At the same time the predecessor bests us yet again, the Moto G7 Power is still pretty impressive with a premium of a few more hours, 2 hours to be more precise. We also scored below the Xiaomi Mi 9T. Just so you know, so it's impressive, but not as impressive as the last year model. And the charging is on the long side, 2 hours and 26 minutes, and after 1 hour, you would have reached 53% battery charge, 30 minutes, 29%, so should charge faster, especially since the charger bundle here promised a lot of stuff. Okay, we're done with the battery, let's talk about the speakers. There's some good news here, we're getting stereo speakers, there's one at the bottom, and the one at the top is actually the earpiece here. And we also have an audio jack here, so there's that. And there's something extra, they added an extra app, it's called Moto Audio, and I was actually surprised by the options. We have Smart Audio, Music, Movie, Game, Custom, and you can actually customize this experience with uh, treble, boost, vocal boost, and manual sliders, so there's quite a bit to enjoy here. Now, speaking of enjoying, let's actually turn up the volume and start listening to some tunes. Okay, so definitely not images, but rather audio, here we go. Okay, impressions. The audio is very, believe me, very, very loud and you will not cover the speaker here as it's in the right side and there's never a way of covering it in landscape mode. Now the highs are also decent, the body doesn't vibrate, but the bass was very modest towards non-existent. Maybe the customization may help you with that. So back to the website and we have volume power test with a decibel meter. The bottom speaker reaches 87.5 decibels with an acoustic sample and the top speaker 82.7, so about 5 decibels difference. Using the lower value, we managed to beat phones like, uh, let's see, Motorola One Macro and Xiaomi Redmi Note 8 Pro. At the same time, we stayed below phones like the Nokia 6.2 and Huawei P40 Lite. The more relevant test was actually the gaming one. Check out this result, 102.6 decibels, it's actually excellent. Uh, almost top 20 material above Huawei Nova 5T, Xiaomi Mi 90, Huawei uh, at the same time below Huawei P40 Lite and Galaxy A51. Okay, we're done with the tests. Let's talk about the cameras in a punch hole here in the left side top corner. 16 megapixel shooter for the selfies. At the back side, quite the evolution from the single camera predecessor. Quad camera setup. 16, 16 megapixel main camera, f1.7 aperture, phase detection autofocus checks out, then there is an 8 megapixel surprising telephoto camera with 2x optical zoom, you don't see cameras like this on phones like this, another 8 megapixel camera with an ultra wide lens, and finally 2 megapixel macro camera because it's trendy. LED flash, 4K video capture, but the predecessor also had 4K, so not that big of an evolution. Other than that, the options are pretty straightforward, you're getting your typical uh, portrait cutout, macro, spot color, cinemagraph, video, macro, and something new, even though I've seen it on uh, phones from Motorola before. It's actually the 120 frames per second Full HD slow-mo selfie video. Okay, so here we are in the camera department. Let's talk about photos. We have quite a few of them. And I'm going to start with these very beautiful close-ups of flowers, provided that I actually turn it like this. Okay, so these are excellent, but they're definitely not looking like that in real life, so the colors were a bit buffed by the artificial intelligence. Still, they make pretty good shots, so if you want to get in close and take close-ups of flowers, you'll be happy and surprised with the results, but if you're taking macros, the low resolution of the macro camera definitely reveals quite a bit of noise. 
so you should be better off taking macros with the main camera. Okay, so another thing I noticed is that the colors are a bit intense on this handset and uh, that happens in quite a few of these shots. So let's get those with more colors here. The sky will be white sometimes, the blues will be electric blues and the reds will be too intense. But the thing that I like is the texture here. You can see the light glistening on these toys and that's pretty cool. And the details, I would say they're decent for a 16 megapixel camera. The thing that blew me away was the zoom. Still, we have a 2x optical zoom and this is actually better than 90% of the zoom lacking mid-range phones. Selfies, we have that galore here. Make sure you remove the beautify effects and you should be happy with the results. One thing I didn't like here was the texture of the eyes. I always look at that. Uh, I wanted it to be more human. I mean, I like the texture of the skin and the hair, but the eyes, they don't look very natural to me. So there may be some customization there. Pretty good cutout during the bokeh. As you can see, my head is perfectly cut from the background. So that's a plus. Okay, and we have several more shots here for extra color. Now, if you're planning at taking a, this is a regular shot. This is the ultra wide shot. The details are definitely lower here. The colors are a bit more intense, but the image is also a bit darker. I noticed at times. Trying some macros things are working out fine. So uh, I would say that it's a jump from the predecessor by about 30 to 40 percent and I do mean it. I, aside from the colors and even that's up for debate, there's no drawback here. Actually the zoom surprised me a lot. Even the macros were decent and if you tone down the AI you maybe get some satisfying colors and for $200 phones this actually can hold its own. I would say it can fight Maybe something like the Redmi Note 9, the 8T, excuse me. Maybe the Redmi Note 9 and even the Redmi Note 9 Pro, even though I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Okay, so those are daytime picks. Let's see the nighttime was ones, which aren't half bad as well. Even the zoom was decent, surprisingly, for low light pictures. Now, this is um, not a very constant camera. So we have some excellent shots and we have some blurry shots. Those that do make it are very clear and they're pretty well lit up. So there's that. Forget about the ultra wide shots. They're definitely disappointing. They have huge lights, they're blurry, but if you have a decent light source in your area and you're taking nighttime pics, you may end up with a bit of a surprise. So if, if even the zoom is okay at night, imagine what this phone can do. And I actually have a great shot of a flower here. You wouldn't guess it was taken during the night time. This is it. And an extra one. This is actually wallpaper worthy, which shows you what this cheap phone can do. Okay, I guess we're pretty much done with the uh, photos. Let's talk about the videos. We have an app for that. Okay, so first of all, we got the focus test right here for you. Not as fast as the flagship, obviously, but pretty decent, as you can well see. Now let's get to more underwhelming things. Uh, we also have video in motion. We're walking around and the stabilization is lacking. We're actually having to dodge people because they were walking outside the park. And on this small screen, things may look okay, but on a bigger screen, you're definitely going to notice a bit of shakiness and the results are pretty underwhelming. Okay, and the colors are, by the way, very intense and the image is overexposed. That's something I noticed as well. Uh, another letdown was the selfie video. You can see it here. It's shaky. My face is a bit too white. And uh, I feel that the lighting is too intense. There's too big of a contrast. Okay, I may be a bit hard on this phone in this regard. It's probably because the previous capture was actually very good, the photo capture. And here you can obviously see there's overexposure galore. And in some videos, there's an alternation of overexposure and underexposure, and the sky always remains a bit too white. The focus is okay. And there's plenty of details to be had in the 4K captures, however inferior to what we saw on the Galaxy A51 or A71, if you're really talking about 4K. We also have a peacock here to demonstrate the pretty beautiful colors, but the grass is, I would say, fluorescent green. It's too intense. So I'm not very impressed by this. I think that it can, well, maybe get beaten by the Xiaomi phone 
of $200 this year, maybe like the Redmi Note 9 when I get to test it, could get beaten, remains to be seen. It's still a bump in quality from the predecessor by about 15% or maybe 20. Night time, well, you can forget about filming, uh, things get shaky, they get blurry if you start moving around, and they're also very dark, which is to be expected from a phone with this price tag to be really honest. Let's see another video quickly, this one here. Now the green of the vegetation is good, but the quality looks 480p at times, not Full HD or 4K. So stick to photos, stick to pretty good selfies, do a 4K filming every once in a while, and definitely don't use the ultra wide at night. But the zoom camera is possibly the thing that impressed me the most. Okay, so we're done with the camera. Time to talk about other things. This is a dual SIM phone which uses one of the slots for microSD and SIM. It's got two nano SIM card slots, it's got 4G connectivity, it's got Wi-Fi only 2.4 GHz, there's no 5 GHz here, which is one of the drawbacks of the phone if you ask me. At least there's Bluetooth 5.0, there's GPS, GLONASS, Beidou, uh, AGPS and Galileo and an USB-C 2.0 port on the bottom side. The calls were pretty decently loud and clear in my book and uh, let's see how we did in the speed test because we did a bunch of those okay so unsurprisingly the wi-fi was on the low side so we only got to 46.4 uh, mega per second downloads on wi-fi and 24.8 mega per second uploads truly truly low 4g on the other hand quite good 151 over 64.9 4g Pretty, pretty good. Now, on the software side, if you've seen an Android 10 phone from Motorola once before, you've seen them all, got the uh, left side for the Google News, stories and information. You can pinch the screen or keep it pressed to trigger the widgets, which are all stock. So basically, this is a stock Android 10 experience with some extra Motorola sprinkled on it like, like Salt Bay with his stakes. What Motorola put here is a bunch of tips. They also put the Moto Actions. A series of gestures if you have it quick capture fast flashlight the moto display pick display attentive display and also motorola game time which is basically a toolbar you can pull from here with a bunch of things which will let you game easily on the security side there's a fingerprint scanner here in the center and let's see it in action i mean it looks pretty fast i actually customize it for two fingers but sometimes it can miss if you don't place the finger properly Anyways, that's it security-wise. Let's see what else. Uh, for multitasking, you got this continuous carousel of windows and you also have split screen if you really need to. The pre-installed apps don't include any bloatware, so there's that. Uh, we have Motorola with those features. Aside from that, the typical Google Play suite, photos, sheets, slides, YouTube, and you get the gist of it. If you want other details here, so you swipe down and you see the quick settings and notifications, pretty straightforward and clean. And in the settings area, typical options. Battery, storage, privacy, location, and of course, digital well-being and parental control. Okay, so we're about done. This is the end of the review and I guess it's time to access our good old website. So here we go, gsmdome.com. Now the pros and cons on the pro side, this is definitely a cute looking phone at the back side on this hue. And it's got a pretty okay display in my view. You can watch movies on it. Of course, the battery is a selling point. It's a pretty impressive battery. Uh, it doesn't have lag, it doesn't have overheating. The stereo speakers are solid and quite loud. Uh, Excellent battery once again. The pictures are definitely superior to the Motorola G7 entire series, not the, just the Moto G7 Power. There's okay low light capture overall and uh, nice zoom. Fast 4G and a stock Android 10 is definitely always a plus. On the con side, no 5 GHz Wi-Fi. The generic design, so basically this looks very much like the Motorola One Macro, a bit like the One Action and you get the idea. The charging is too long to properly make it a viable battery phone. The battery is, to be honest, below the Moto G7 power by a few hours. Video capture overall left me wanting more, so maybe upgrade that. The colors were a bit too vivid in photos and the ultra wide capture was inferior to the main camera caption. Uh, capture. So in the end, there's this conclusion. Uh, the battery phone segment is basically dead. Keep that in mind. There are many phones with 5,000 or 6,000 mAh battery out there. So there is no longer a need 
for battery phones. You're going to have to launch 7000 mAh battery phones and that's crazy. That's too much, that's too heavy and too thick unless they make a breakthrough. So this may be one of the last phones and if you want battery strictly, you should buy the Moto G7 Power. If you want battery and a pretty good mid-range phone camera, you can buy the Moto G8 Power for around $200. You can do some mid or minor level gaming, you can take pretty good selfies and you can also well, watch videos and listen to powerful music on it. Truly powerful stereo speakers. So there's that. The upgrade from the Moto G7 Powers comes in the form of the speaker and the camera. That's it from gsnon.com. Hope you enjoyed the review. This has been the presentation of the Moto G8 Power. Bye-bye.